Hi there, and welcome to our Web Weekend Podcast for August 2nd, 2020. It is great to be able to connect with you here in this setting. We're also having in-person services today, and in both settings we'll be sharing from Scripture and considering how to put it into practice as well as praying together and uh, sharing some online tools that will help you as you have an opportunity to put them into practice in your individual setting as well as make some connections for kids, online giving, and a variety of other kinds of connections to our congregation. Today we're starting a series together for the month of August talking about how it all fits. So let's jump in. I don't know if this has ever happened to you that you have been looking around for things maybe in your home or maybe at a store or wherever it might be and I'm not sure just how it happens to me but sometimes it does. I can be looking right at the thing and, and totally miss it and while I'm watching and trying to find this item sometimes I'll even ask for help and if it's happened to you you may have felt the same as me and that is sometimes I feel a little silly that it was sitting right there in front of me all along. <laughs> now there's an old saying that when I was growing up there was a particular character on TV named Maxwell Smart and uh, he used to say missed it by that much and sometimes that's been the case for me when I've been looking for things and it's interesting when you think about those moments and you realize that there are other important places that you don't want to miss things uh, you don't want to overlook things because you're too busy or you're focused in other directions as it relates to sometimes you know with appointments or with special events and I don't know if that's happened to you but at points in my life an appointment may not have made it onto my calendar and I've missed it because I've been focused in another direction. Now when it starts to get into larger issues and warning signs start to happen maybe as it relates to your health or the way you're engaging with your family it starts to get a little bit more serious and today we're really going to be talking about how it's possible that on a grander scale people who are following Jesus or even people who have never really made some kind of a connection to him could find themselves in a place where they might be as a result of their personal history or whatever they may be focused on or their approach to life they might miss an important part of life as to how all of life fits together. What we're talking about is realizing that the grand story of God is happening all around us. It's where we find purpose and meaning and value to life, that our story is able to exist, that we are present in this world and able to enjoy anything good, is because of the grand story of God. He includes us in His story. And as important as our story is to us, it pales by comparison to the grand story that God is unfolding around us. What can become a mindset for us as we approach life is that we find ourselves putting us at the center of the story. And it even happens in people's lives who are connected to Jesus and are seeking to honor him on a daily basis. Sometimes we hear it in statements like, he's, he's always here for me, or he's always with me, or he provides what I need and what I want. And we need to caution ourselves that we don't make ourselves the center of the story. Because often in that moment, we can use God as a construct to be able to just ease our emotional or physical or spiritual health which he cares about deeply. But ultimately, he is at the center of all of those. And it's so easy to reduce the story to things about our day or to our life, to our money or our worship, our plans, our time, our needs. But the truth is, this world is not all about us. God didn't wake up one morning and think, you know, hmm, I think I'm incomplete and lonely without people. Do we really think that the all-powerful creator of the universe 
who hovered over the chaos and created life needed anything? Now, the story that we're talking about is really about him and not us. And it's happening all around us. And we can see the generosity of God, the magnificence of God, the redemption of God, the character of God, the judgment of God, the blessing of God, and the comfort of God. But in the midst of everyday life, going to the store and dealing with family and dealing with our finances and dealing with our concerns about employment or health or whatever, and these are all very real issues and need to be addressed, but they're not designed to consume us or distract us from the true story of God. We were designed to flow into God's story that he's unfolding to glorify, which is really a word that reflects elevating or lifting up his name, to honor, which really reflects bringing endorsement of our lives and how our lives flow into his to participate, that is to engage in the active parts of the story that he is longing for us to be part of. Check this out in Psalm 19, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Heaven is declaring God's glory, the sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech, no words, their voices can't be heard, but their sounds extend through the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth. God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like a groom coming out of his honeymoon suite, like a warrior. It thrills at running its course. It rises in one end of the sky, its circuit is complete at the other, nothing escapes its heat. Now watch this shift from the glory of God in all that's around us to how he encourages us and shapes us. The Lord's instruction is perfect, reviving one's very being. The Lord's laws are faithful, making naive people wise. The Lord's regulations are right, gladdening the heart. The Lord's commands are pure, giving light to the eyes. Honoring the Lord is correct, lasting forever. The Lord's judgments are true. All of these are righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than tons of pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, even dripping off the honeycomb. No doubt about it, your servant is enlightened by them. There is great reward in keeping them. But can anyone know what they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin and save your servant from willful sins. Don't let them rule me. Then I'll be completely blameless. I'll be innocent of great wrongdoing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. God's grand story is evidenced in creation. It's all around us. It's shown in his loving guidance here in this passage that keeps us on track. His potential to help us have the best life possible as we follow his guidance and put it into practice. As we understand that he provides connection and purpose for our lives. As he cares about the meaning and value that we can find in life as he helps us stay healthy emotionally, physically, and spiritually, and weaving us at the same time into the larger picture that we are yet to see. It's absolutely amazing. Now for some, on occasion, there have been people that we've experienced that have claimed to be all about God's story, and whether it's because of their own humanity or their experience or their approach getting in the way or sometimes they've been all about building their own story and they've claimed it was really about God's story. But these situations, these experiences that some of us have had have been abrasive at the very least and repulsive at the worst. 
Sometimes it makes us wonder whether or not it's worth it or whether this story is even real. If you're willing, I would encourage you to take some time to think about maybe some kind of a step of asking God to reveal himself to you in these weeks as we talk about how it all fits together. If I understand anything about God, I believe that he aches with you for the abuses that you've experienced. And I believe he longs to share connection with you in a way that will reveal who he really is in spite of flawed interpretations that you may have experienced. All around us right now, in the room I'm in, and the room you're in, there are radio waves that are buzzing past us and we just are not tuned in. And ultimately, there's music in those radio waves, there's opinions, there's news, there's all kinds of different communication that are a part of those waves, whether they come from satellites or whether they come from AM and FM stations. Regardless, they are happening all around us. And the reality is that we can't tune in, our ears are unable to perceive them. Now ultimately, God has engineered us to be able to tune in to Him. And as we get in sync with Him and as we start to listen to His voice, what He longs to share with us is the opportunity how we can engage with Him and how we can experience the fullness of His power and life and how we can follow him as we live, how we can direct people to him as a testimony of his grace, how our lives can be an expression of something specific that he longs to reveal in our life that we can be part of that helps us discover the meaning and purpose and how our lives flow into his story. So as we step into places, we start to recognize that there is a story for the way God wants to help us with our time today. Or there's a story for the way God wants to help us encounter the person that is in front of us today. Or there's a story that God longs to help us to discover as it relates to the way we find ourselves spending money or investing in our family. Wherever it is that we find ourselves in life, God has a story that he longs to unfold in those places. And his story is going to unfold in those places and times. And he longs for us to be tuned in to it. Today, we're simply asking the question, what if we lived our whole life and missed the fact that God has a story that we fit into and it's not the other way around, that God just fits in to our story? Now, over the next several weeks, we're going to be asking questions like, how would we start to tune in or how would it impact the way we think or what could it mean as we follow Jesus? How could we discover where we fit or how could the story continue to unfold? Now these are questions we want to ask together over the next few weeks and I trust that you'll take time to carve out a way to engage in some of these critical conversations with the people with whom you're watching these videos and explore the steps that God is asking you to take in that moment. Today, as we take time to pray, I want us to pray that as God uh, seeks to open our eyes, that we will choose to see. And as God works in our heart, that we will choose to respond. As God works and reveals himself for those of us who are asking him to, that we will choose to engage. Because none of us, not one of us, wants to look back on a life, even those of us who believe we're following Jesus well, but we don't want to realize that somehow we've lived for anything less than the grand story of God that is unfolding before us. As I mentioned, some of the things that we want to pray for are that as God opens our eyes, that we would choose to see, that as he works in our heart, that we would choose to respond, and that as he reveals himself in his work in us, that we would choose to engage. Let's 
pray together. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness to us. And we recognize that your story is happening all around us. And we ask that you would forgive us for the times that we have made the story of our lives about us instead of allowing our lives to flow into your story where we have put ourselves at the center of the story and said this is all about my stuff and we've tried to just make you fit with what we want to do in life and how we long to kind of be the boss oftentimes. God, you've got a story that you're unfolding that started long before we ever showed up on the scene and will be going long after we're gone. And so God, for the time that we're here, we don't wanna miss the reality of your story and how it is unfolding and how we are part of it. Over the next few weeks, I pray that you would help us to engage, to see and respond what you are speaking to us about as it relates to your story. You are working in this world, and we want to be part of it. And so I pray that you would help us to engage. In your name I pray. Amen. There are a couple extra questions that I want to highlight for you that you'll find in the podcast extras. Several of those are there for your discovery as you choose or take time to read through Psalm 19 on your own. The questions that we usually have set there are discovery Bible questions related to how this story helps me to understand and see some new things about God. What does this help me to see about myself and what will I do with what I've heard and understood? But a couple of questions are there today to be able to help foster conversation, maybe in the pod group that you're a part of or even just in your family as you're watching this video together. The question says, when you think about God having a grand story and you being involved in it, what do you feel about that whole picture? Is it excited? Is it bored? Is it terrified? Is it undecided? Or is it indifferent? And then when you process that you have a part to play in God's grand story, what kind of thoughts come to your mind? As you explore those questions together, it's encouraging to be able to share some of those things out loud. And I would encourage you to do so as we continue to navigate this time together online. Taking time to mention the questions that you find in the podcast extras. There's also the lyric video uh, music links, as well as links to uh, where you can find Cabin Kids, the kids ministry uh, videos that are a part of our church. Uh, we'd love for you to be able to connect to those on Facebook. There's connections there related to online giving and prayer requests and a variety of other kind of communication tools and connection tools as well. Those are all found in the description section here for YouTube or for Facebook. Uh, in YouTube, you'll find all of those listed there. And on Facebook, there's a, an additional link that will take you to a Facebook note. And that note has all of that information available to you there. Thank you again for the opportunity to visit with you in this setting uh, for a few minutes here today. If you could just take a few minutes and let me remind you to like, comment, or share. Uh, that is very helpful. And again, any prayer requests, let me direct you to a private message that uh, can be sent to the email listed below. As we say farewell, let me remind you that we're praying for you and thank you for praying for us too, and as you minister his goodness and blessings this week, may you be encouraged in all of the places you live, work, play, and learn as you share who Jesus is through your lives today. Have a great day.